Okay, this tutorial is really just for the advanced group, although if you're in the 9th, 10th grade group, uh, you're also welcome to watch. I'm just going to um, show you exactly what I mean by the bounding boxes, because I saw that uh, several of you just had some, I don't know, different methods and different things that you've been showing over the past couple of weeks. So let's clarify. Um, so this is really just for 3D vectors. And these could be any kind of vector, displacement, force, uh, whatever, moments. Um, so let's start by showing just the basic axis directions. All right, we've got our, obviously our X, Y, and Z. And I hope that you can see how this is attempting to show like 3D space, like think of using a program like uh, SketchUp in particular or Onshape. Um, but yeah, we're trying to show X and Y are creating like a, like a ground floor, like a flat surface between them, if you can imagine that, and then Z is sticking up perpendicularly out of that. By the way, if you have, um, triangular graph paper, you probably don't, but if you do, um, that, that looks like this, eh. Maybe that, yeah. So uh, having triangular graph paper can actually be a bit of a help in this as well. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, so let's say we have a vector to show. Uh, maybe it is like 10i plus 15j plus uh, 5k. I think we had one actually very similar to that in one of the assignments. So it might be helpful firstly to mark off um, just what the distances are. So I might do like, you know, like 5, 10, 15, and same over here, 5, 10, 15, and I might do the same here, 5, 10, 15. 15. Okay, we're just setting up a scale just like we would if we were graphing in X and Y. You've got to have a consistent scale. And so you start by doing the bounding box. And the idea is that the 10 and the 15 and the 5 are simply the three dimensions length, width, height of that bounding box. So we have the 10 and then maybe I'll do in brown. I'll do that 15. And then uh, let's make a slightly more subtle color. Um, oh, I don't know. Um, there's nothing really subtle here at all. I'll do the yellow. Okay, we'll do five. Okay, and what we're doing, you obviously don't have to do these fancy colors. I'm just trying to go above and beyond, oh, don't do that, and show you just what these dimensions are. I do not want you to be lost on which directions are which. Okay, so that is a bounding box. So you can see um, all of those brown ones are all parallel and they're all a length of 15. All of those gray ones are parallel and have a length of 10. All of those yellow ones are vertical and have a length of five. All right, again, the colors are there just to emphasize which ones are which. And then, your vector, which I'll do in green, your vector stretches from the origin to the most, um, how could we say that, like the most diagonal, the most, the most distant uh, corner of the box. So the one that is on the very, very opposite side and the top instead of the bottom. And that's it right there. That That is our vector. I might label that with an R for resultant. Okay, or it could be an F for force or whatever it is. 
And then, of course, if you want to find the magnitude of vector r, you would take the square root of all of those. And let's calculate that, in fact, because that also just helps us see if we are on the right track. 100 plus 15 squared plus 25 equals that, and we will take the square root, 18.7. Okay, 18.7, which feels very good, feels very correct. All right, um, that's it. So um, by contrast, some of you have been doing, you know, like you've been drawing like just like a big general box that has nothing really to do with the vector, okay? And that's not what we want. We want the vector to actually match to the box itself, okay? You draw the box first, and then the box is supposed to show you um, kind of the extent of that, okay? All right, we'll leave it there. That was a little six-minute tutorial. Thanks a lot, and Zoom with me. Email me if you have any questions.